Hello out there, folks. How are you? If you're anything like me, you're very disheartened today. You and I witnessed another blow to the Constitution just a few days ago. If you're anything like me, you're disheartened because not only do we have a president that does not respect the Constitution or our laws, but that there doesn't seem to be anyone out there willing to stop him. If you're anything at all like me, you are disheartened over what's happening to our great nation. What Obama has taken upon himself to do with illegals is definitely the big story of this past week, and we will go over the president's speech in detail here on The Ray Warner Show. I am Ray Warner, your host. Thank you so much for listening in. Uh, If you have any comments or questions for me, concerns, if you want to rant or vent, and a part of you must want to rant or vent after this action, the email address is Show at gmail.com. You know, you got to love how Obama, President Obama, when it comes to ISIS or Ukraine, Russia, Iran, China, uh, North Korea, I mean, his favorite thing to do around the world has been to lead from behind. He'll let Egypt figure out peace between Israel and Hamas. You know, ISIS is still over there spreading, growing, beheading people. Vladimir Putin is just running circles around this fool and laughing the whole time at him. But when it comes to destroying America, when it comes to standing against the American people, boy, he's just out there front and center with his middle finger in your face. So President Obama, Barack the First, doesn't care what the people want, doesn't care what the law is or what Congress has passed, the current Congress or any other Congress for that matter, doesn't care what the Constitution says, President Obama has decided he is going to do things his way and no one is going to tell him any different. On Thursday this past week, Brock the First laid out his intentions for uh, illegal insurgency. I call it that because illegal immigration is really just a contradiction in terms. Uh, Immigration, by definition, is legal. It is the legal entering of another country. The problem we have is with insurgents. People just coming over the border illegally. Now, he could have responded to this problem And it is a problem. It's definitely a problem. He could have responded to this problem any number of ways. He could have asked for more money and resources to uh, fight this problem head on. Uh, We need border security. We need a fence. We need patrol. We need troops. We need something on the borders of this country. Without borders, we're no country at all. He could have asked for resources to do his job, which is to uphold the law. Uh, the resources to capture and deport illegal aliens, resources to fight and to stop human trafficking. I mean, he could have asked for the resources. Actually, he should have asked for the resources and the cooperation needed to secure this country in order to, as the executive branch, faithfully execute the laws of this country. But that's not what he did. No, not even close. What the president did was not within his authority to do. Listen to Barack, the constitutional attorney and scholar. There are enough laws on the books by Congress that are very clear in terms of how we have to enforce uh, our immigration system. I know some people want me to bypass Congress and change the laws on my own. If, in fact, I could solve all these problems without passing laws in Congress, then I would do so. For me to simply, through executive order, ignore those congressional mandates would uh, not conform with my appropriate role as president. With respect to uh, the notion that I can just suspend deportations through executive order, uh, that's just not the case. This notion that somehow I can just change the laws unilaterally is just not true. There are laws on the books that Congress has passed. There are laws on the books that I have to enforce. I swore an oath 
to uphold the laws on the books. We're also a nation of laws. That's part of our tradition. That's not how, that's not how our system works. That's not how our constitution is written. I am not uh, a, a, a dictator. I'm the president. That montage is over uh, the course of a number of years, ranging from 2009 to 2013 or so. Um, so Obama knows that what he did is outside the scope of his presidential authority, or at least he used to. You heard him say over and over again, this notion that he can just change the laws himself just isn't true. He has to enforce the laws passed by Congress. That's his job. He can't do it alone. That's not how our system works. That's not how our Constitution is written. Let's go back even further. This is Barack, the senator, on presidential authority back in 2008. I take the Constitution very seriously. The biggest problems that we're facing right now have to do with George Bush trying to bring more and more power into the executive branch and not go through Congress at all. And that's what I intend to reverse when I'm president of the United States of America. So there you heard Barack, the senator, scared to death of the executive power grab of George W. Bush. Just absolutely frightened by Bush's overreach and vowing to make that right when he becomes president. Well, we see where that's gone. The power grab of executive authority by Barack the First is unprecedented. The much hated by the left, President Nixon, never even dreamed of illegally amassing this much power. And we're supposed to believe that Barack I was worried about what George W. Bush was doing? I mean, you talk about absurd. There has been more executive overreach by this president. And how many times has the Supreme Court ruled against Obama in overreach cases? Like 13 times? And they're all 9 to 0 decisions? But he doesn't care. He doubles down. He keeps going. He plows ahead, steamrolling his leftist ideology on this nation. But he takes the Constitution, in his words, very seriously. Yeah, right. The speech made by President Obama on Thursday was an absolute lie fest of epic proportions. So let's get started. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Just hit the highlights. Here is Barack I selling what he's about to do. For more than 200 years, our tradition of welcoming immigrants from around the world has given us a tremendous advantage over other nations. But today, our immigration system is broken, and everybody knows it. This is lie number one. It's a straw man argument. Our immigration system is broken, and everyone knows it. That's lie number one. What does it mean that the system is broken? I think that every time he says it. The truth is, our immigration system is not being enforced. That is the president's actual job. That's what he's supposed to be doing. He's not enforcing the law on the books now. I already played the soundbite of him saying that enforcing the laws on the books was his job as president. So he does know. He's just not doing it. He's refusing to do it. And immigration is not the only area where he is uh, failing to faithfully execute the duties of his office. So, in his opening argument, there is an impeachable offense. And I don't understand what Republicans are so afraid of. If any president ever needed to be not only impeached, but somehow forcefully removed from office, it was this clown. So let's move it along. And undocumented immigrants who desperately want to embrace those responsibilities see little option but to remain in the shadows. And I can't stand hearing this either. Undocumented immigrants, first off, an immigrant, by definition, is legal and will have documents. Immigration, by definition, is legal. When you immigrate into a country, you're going to have documents. You're going to be a documented immigrant. Secondly, this is very disrespectful to some of the home nations these people come from. I'll bet you a large percentage of illegal aliens have documents in their home country. They're not undocumented. Why is a birth certificate from, say, Mexico a non-document? Isn't it an insult to Mexico to say, we don't recognize your documents? Seems to me it would be. Most of these people are documented, I'm sure. So let's just call them what they are, insurgents. Non-American citizens infiltrating our border. That's what they are. There is no such a thing as an undocumented immigrant. 
Move it along. When I took office, I committed to fixing this broken immigration system. And I began by doing what I could to secure our borders. Today, we have more agents and technology deployed to secure our southern border than at any time in our history. And over the past six years, illegal border crossings have been cut by more than half. Although this summer there was a brief spike in unaccompanied children being apprehended at our border, the number of such children is now actually lower than it's been in nearly two years. Overall, the number of people trying to cross our border illegally is at its lowest level since the 1970s. Those are the facts. No, those are lies. Those aren't facts. He's trying to build some credibility. But again, it's all lies. Does anyone believe a word this guy says? He expects us to believe that since he took office, he has been a champion for border security. We all know the border is wide open. He's trying to tell us it's secure. He mentioned a few months ago that uh, over 50,000 alien children flooded over the border. What he neglected to say was that it had to have been planned. The administration posted a contract opportunity to transport them six months in advance. They knew they were coming. They knew it was going to happen. We also learned that this administration pulled Border Patrol something like 45 miles off the southern border. How is that making it secure? I recently brought you the story of the M4s used by our Border Patrol that are mysteriously disappearing and not being replaced. Is this part of the glorious border strengthening action he's taken? He says deportations have increased. Well, of course they have. This administration counts everybody they turn around at the line, not to mention that's expected with as easy as it is to get in here. Most deportees are repeat offenders. The illegal alien that killed three people, including two deputies in California a few weeks ago, had already been convicted of crimes and deported several times. So, yeah, we know deportations are up. But that statistic is actually a bad one, created by your policies, Mr. President. So, more lies. But that doesn't matter. He carried on. Last year, 68 Democrats, Republicans, and Independents came together to pass a bipartisan bill in the Senate. And independent experts said that it would help grow our economy and shrink our deficits. Had the House of Representatives allowed that kind of bill a simple yes or no vote, they would have passed with support from both parties. And today it would be the law. So his next argument in his attempt to justify this illegal action is the Senate bill. I'm tired of hearing about this stupid Senate bill especially since how many hundreds of bills are sitting on Harry Reid's desk to this day? Whoever is feeding Harry Reid his peas, please tell him that's not how our government is supposed to work. Barack I can't seem to get this right either. What part of spending bills originate in the House is confusing you, Mr. Constitutional Attorney? Why have you not taken up this fight with Harry Reid over the hundreds of bills passed in the House? That's the way it's supposed to work. Bills originate in the House, go through the Senate, then hit your desk. Check Harry Reid's inbox if you want to talk about a stalled bill. You can't blame House Republicans for not voting on a bill that didn't originate with them. That's what bills are supposed to do, originate in the House. But since they didn't vote on it, and we all know that you, sir, hear the non-vote, so you're telling us it would have passed. Well, how does he know that? Well, of course, he hears the non-vote, right? We found that out after the midterms. And I love how he throws in these independent experts who say the bill would help grow our economy and shrink our deficits. Who are these independent experts? Is Jonathan Gruber one of them? Or are these some other hired deceivers that worked in your administration and we just don't know about them yet because unlike Gruber, they're smart enough to keep their big mouths shut instead of brag about how they lied to the American people. I don't believe you on your independent experts. In fact, I want names. Who are these people? So I can ask them myself what they think of the stupid Senate bill. This is another straw man argument. He just throws out this vague, unidentifiable consensus on how great his policies are for the country. And we're all supposed to believe it. So now, since Republicans didn't do what he wanted... He's going to talk about his authority to act without them. Now, I continue to believe that the best way to solve this problem 
is by working together to pass that kind of common sense law. But until that happens, there are actions I have the legal authority to take as president, the same kinds of actions taken by Democratic and Republican presidents before me, that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. Does the president have the authority to act on immigration? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, he has a duty to act on immigration. So act, Mr. President, enforce the law. Enforce the laws on the books passed by Congress. Act within your constitutionally granted authority to make the system work. But see, when he says act, that's not what he means. He doesn't mean within his legal authority. He means to take the law into his own hands because Congress isn't passing the law that he wants passed. This is another thing that needs to get into his thick skull. Congress does not represent you, Barack I. Congress represents the people. Congress is allowed to pass what laws it sees fit. Congress serves at the will and pleasure of we, the people. The House can write and pass bills it sees fit, and the Senate can vote on those bills as the Senate sees fit. That's it. The President can sign those bills into law or veto as he sees fit, or she. That's how it works. And it wasn't that long ago that you, yourself, demonstrated an understanding of this. I played the audio. You, Mr. President through leadership, can work to influence what laws are passed, and a good leader would do just that. But you do not demand or else to get what you and only you want. Then have a temper tantrum when your demands aren't met. No, you do not dictate to Congress what they are to do. And don't tell us what other presidents have done. Yes, other presidents have acted on immigration, but only according to the law on the books or within the scope of bills passed by the Congress of their time. You, Barack I, as you keep reminding us, don't have a bill. That means you fall back on law already passed. This isn't hard. Most of what he mentioned is already part of his job, and he is just failing to do it. Now he gets into some of the non-specifics of what he's going to do. First, we'll build on our progress at the border with additional resources for our law enforcement personnel so that they can stem the flow of illegal crossings and speed the return of those who do cross over. Second, I'll make it easier and faster for high-skilled immigrants, graduates, and entrepreneurs to stay and contribute to our economy, as so many business leaders have proposed. Third, will take steps to deal responsibly with the millions of undocumented immigrants who already live in our country. So here is the bait and switch. He groups his amnesty in with a couple of things he is supposed to already be doing anyway. Just like when Democrats, you know, they talk about spending cuts, uh, a lot grouped in with higher taxes. We always get the taxes, but then the cuts never happen. So here is the bait and switch. He brings up Border Patrol first. This is in an effort to, you know, get you on board. Yeah, we need more Border Patrol, Mr. President. If that's the case, why aren't you doing that anyway? That's your job. Secure the border. You don't need an act of Congress to do your job. I mean, that is well within the scope of his executive authority. He doesn't need to announce it. Just call your Homeland Security Director, Jay Johnson, into the White House and say, okay, I want to get this mess on the border cleaned up. Let's reallocate resources. Let's hire Border Patrol. What's the condition of the fence? I mean, roll up your sleeves and go to work. And honestly, what did he say? First, we'll build on our progress at the border with additional resources for our law enforcement personnel. Don't you love how vague that is? We're going to build on our progress with additional resources. What exactly does that mean? Someone email me, please, and tell me what it is to build on the progress that this administration has made at the border. From what I've observed, the progress can only be measured in the negative. How do you build on that? And it doesn't matter anyway, because as I said, this is already his job and he's not doing it. Then he says, second, I'll make it easier and faster for high-skilled immigrants, graduates, and entrepreneurs to stay and contribute to our economy as so many business leaders have proposed. Okay, who are these business leaders? I want names. Anytime you hear Obama talk about these straw men, demand to know who they are. I'm tired of the unable-to-be-interviewed crowd of supporters he throws in our face. And again, he's being vague. I'll make it easier and faster? What in Sam Hill does that mean? 
Is he going to allocate funds for high-speed printers for printing documents? Is he going to grease the wheels of the cars driven by the people whose job it is? To the, I mean, what does that mean? The illegal aliens are already staying here. How is he going to make it easier and faster for the skilled immigrants to stay here? I'm sorry, that just doesn't make any sense. I want specifics. What is he going to do? I mean, I'd hate to lose all of the nuclear physicists crossing the southern border to some technicality, all of these skilled immigrants. And if he can do that, well, why hasn't he? I would argue that creating efficiency in the immigration system that already exists is within the scope of his responsibility anyway. Where has he been? He doesn't need a bill for that. Do your job, Mr. President. What are you waiting for? Then he said what his real objective is. Third, we'll take steps to deal responsibly with the millions of undocumented immigrants who already live in our country. Again, more vagueness. What are the steps? Issuing IDs? Work permits? Driver's license? What? What are the steps he is going to take? What does that mean? How, Mr. President, are you going to deal responsibly with them? Because to me, that means deporting them. I mean, deporting them is your responsibility. So if you cross the border illegally, he's promising you will not be prosecuted for that crime. What part of that isn't amnesty? If you broke the law, you will not be punished. How is that not amnesty? Of course it's amnesty. You know, we're not as stupid as Gruber thinks we are, Mr. President. Moving on. I want to say more about this third issue because it generates the most passion and controversy. Even as we are a nation of immigrants, we're also a nation of laws. Undocumented workers broke our immigration laws, and I believe that they must be held accountable. So now we're a nation of laws. I guess unless you're the president, then you can do whatever you want. Is that it? If we're a nation of laws, then enforce the law, Mr. President. And if you broke the law, we're going to hold you accountable. We're going to hold you accountable by making it easier and faster for you to stay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'll tell you, folks, sometimes it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is how liberty dies, with thunderous applause. Do you ever feel like Christmas has been hijacked? Hey, uh, where's Christian? How's he doing? Is he okay? Oh, he's fine, really. He's just, he's just not into Christmas this year, that's all. By all the commercialism and those who want to replace Merry Christmas with Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings, whatever that means. You okay? This is not what Christmas is all about. Some want to pull down every manger scene and tell us why our favorite Christmas traditions are wrong. Newsflash, not in the Bible. That's a pagan idol symbol. It was the winter solstice. Jesus was not born in December. It's exactly what the Druids did. It's like a carjacking, but like of our religion. And guess what? Santa got in the car, kicked Jesus out, and was like, rolling, 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 and took, and took it. Isn't it time somebody spoke up? Everything you see inside there, it's all about Christmas. It's all about Jesus. I know you love Christmas and you want it to be all about what it's all about. This Christmas, dive headfirst into all of the joy, the dancing, the celebration, the feasting, the imagination and traditions that glorify the true reason for the season. Woo, work, Holy Spirit. Ha, can I get an amen? I see yeah. the scales are falling off. Glory, ah, glory. Mm. Join me and my family, and together, let's put Christ back into Christmas. Saving Christmas will open in select theaters on November 14th. For two weeks only, find the theater closest to you. Go to savingchristmas.com. 
21 Signs of Doomsday. God said, man said.com. Noah's Ark, fact or fiction? Geologists say yes to crucifixion. Science says eat butter. God said, man said.com. Scientists study speaking in tongues. Hours of text and audio. God said, man said.com. Doctors flummox but what they found in female brains. St. Peter's fish, hell worms, extraterrestrials amongst us. God said, man said.com. Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Ray Warner Show. I am your host, Ray Warner. If you want to email the show, if you have any comments or any questions or any feedback, you feel free. The email address is Show at gmail.com. Now, let's see. Picking up where we left off. Where were we? Oh, oh yeah. We were so mad that we were handing out IDs. Okay, here's the next bite. The fact is, millions of immigrants in every state of every race and nationality still live here illegally. And let's be honest, tracking down, rounding up, and deporting millions of people isn't realistic. Anyone who suggests otherwise isn't being straight with you. It's also not who we are as Americans. Deporting millions of illegals isn't realistic. Well, it's still the law. It's still the law that you're supposed to be executing. It is unrealistic to think it will happen overnight, but how unrealistic is it to think it can't happen over time, after the border has been secured and the flood has stopped? You know, put yourself in this scenario. I was thinking about this the other day. You come home and you discover that water is filling your basement. What's the first thing you do? I mean, immediately. What's the first thing you frantically do? Water is rising in your basement. Now, if you're being honest with yourself, you're going to say the first thing you do is stop the flow of water. But now all of these politicians in Washington, Obama included, I guess the first thing they would do is break another pipe. Or would they debate on whether or not they can live with the water in the basement or try to figure out how to get the water to come out of the shadows? I don't know. You know, all of this talk about deportation, what good is it if you don't stop the flow? It's like standing in your basement scooping bucketfuls of water and throwing them outside as the water continues to flow in. But he said, that's not who we are as Americans. It's not who we are to stop the flow of water and get it out of our basement. And you know what? He's right. It's not. As of right now, that is not who we are. But a nation of borders is who we're supposed to be as Americans. If we don't have borders, we're not a country. So what are we then, Mr. President? We expect people who live in this country to play by the rules. We expect that those who cut the line will not be unfairly rewarded. So we're going to offer the following deal. If you've been in America for more than five years, if you have children who are American citizens or legal residents, if you register, pass a criminal background check, and you're willing to pay your fair share of taxes, you'll be able to apply to stay in this country temporarily without fear of deportation. You can come out of the shadows and get right with the law. That's what this deal is. Now, this is just laugh out loud funny. Barack the first lecturing anybody on playing by the rules. I mean, that's kind of like Bill Clinton lecturing on the virtues of marital faithfulness. You know, if you live in this country, we expect you to play by the rules. That is unless you're elected president. Then the rules don't apply. I mean, you could just make up crap as you go along. You don't like a rule, you change it. You don't like a law, you don't enforce it. But what he means is he expects the rest of us to play by the rules. His rules, whatever they may be. I mean, on a day-to-day basis, you know, they change. We expect that those who cut the line will not be unfairly rewarded. So we're going to offer the following deal. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. We don't believe you should be rewarded. So here's what you win for having broken the law. He says you shouldn't be rewarded. Then he details the conditions of his amnesty program, which is, of course, the reward. 
You just can't make this stuff up, folks. If I didn't know any better, I would think this was a Saturday Night Live skit. So here's Obama's deal. If you've been here more than five years, well, who's that, first of all? I mean, we don't know what we don't know, right? How do we know someone didn't just cross the border yesterday and say, yeah, I've been here for five years? You know what? In fact, I've been here for seven years. You know what? Now that I think about it, I've been here for ten years. I mean, how do we know? I'm sure we know in some cases we do have repeat offenders. They must be fingerprinting some of these people. So another part of his plan, if you have children who are American citizens or legal residents, well, we just had a bunch of illegal alien children come across the border, didn't we? Weren't they all granted to stay on some kind of refugee status or something? Over 50,000 of them? So now all of those parents just need to get here, right? And they can stay. Then they need to register. This is where the high-speed printers come in. They need to pass a background check. Who's paying for that? And since we have no idea who most of them are, how can they fail? If they know their background is questionable, well, they'll just probably... Nah, they wouldn't give another bogus name, would they? Not these nuclear physicists storming the southern border. And they have to pay their fair share of taxes. Oh, boo-hoo. They can't wait to file taxes. Do you have any idea how much they're going to get? The Democrats' idea of them paying taxes is a negative number. They'll get money back. They'll owe minus $5,000 for the year and get a check. And we're supposed to say after they've paid their fair share, we'll let that be a lesson to you. And he said under his plan, they can get right with the law. That's not getting them right under the law. That's you ignoring the fact that they've broken the law, Mr. President. We're still working on getting you right with the law. Stay there. We'll be right back. You are listening to The Ray Warner Show. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. John and I just couldn't afford health insurance anymore. We exercise, we eat right, and we live a healthy lifestyle. Yet we were paying over $800 per month for a family of four. Then a friend told us about MediShare. MediShare isn't insurance. It's a nationwide network of Christians who save money by sharing in each other's medical bills. Our share is almost 40% less than our old insurance premiums. We still see the same doctors and use the same hospitals if something does happen. The best part is that participating in MediShare exempts us from the tax penalties in the new health reform laws. So as long as we're in the program, the government's mandates to buy expensive insurance won't apply. You should call them today. I'm sure glad we did. If you're a Christian, under 65, and a non-smoker, then MediShare could be the right choice for you. Call 1-866-330-8585 or visit meta-share.org. You do have a choice. As soon as it became clear that this year's migration to the border was different than in past years. This year's migration? Like they're a flock of geese and they're going to go back when the season's over? Saying what needs to be said on the Ray Warner Show. All right, we're back. Thank you for listening. This is the Ray Warner Show. I am your host, Ray Warner. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, the email address is Show at gmail.com. Now, I'm going to skip ahead here. I want to try to get all this in. Obama, again, is trying to bait Republicans into joining him in his illegal activity. And to those members of Congress who question my authority to make our immigration system work better or question the wisdom of me acting where Congress has failed, I have one answer. Pass a bill. Now, I don't know how many different ways I can say this. You don't order them around, Barack the First. You don't have any authority to make demands on Congress. And they don't answer to you. They answer to us, the American people. If we want them to pass a bill, we'll tell them, not you. You just focus on your job, executing the laws on the books. We already have 
immigration law and force it. And so what if they pass a bill? What do you care? If you don't like it, you'll just change it anyway. If you don't like parts of it, you'll alter it. You'll throw part of it out. You'll just fail to execute it. So what difference does it make, honestly? Now, this right here is my personal favorite part of the speech. Are we a nation that tolerates the hypocrisy of a system where workers who pick our fruit and make our beds never have a chance to get right with the law? The people that pick our fruit and make our beds. You know, I would think, if I were Hispanic, that would offend me. Now, we heard Obama before talk about how he wants to make it easier and faster for skilled workers to stay. I didn't know that he was talking about the highly skilled fruit pickers and bed makers that dwell in the shadows. Oh, and this is another one of my favorite parts of the speech. Scripture tells us that we shall not oppress a stranger, for we know the heart of a stranger. We were strangers once, too. Mr. President, don't bring scripture into it now. You really want to do that? The scripture he quoted is from Exodus 23, 9, which says, Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And Mr. President, as long as we're quoting scripture from Exodus, how about Exodus 20, verse 16? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Are you keeping that one, Mr. President? Just asking. How about Romans 13, 1? Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power but God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So remember, Barack I, there is a separation of power under our Constitution, a separation with checks and balances. You do not make demands of Congress, and Congress does not answer to you. Ultimately, the power of the Constitution is of we the people. You govern at the will and on the consent of the governed, Barack I. If we want amnesty, we'll let our representatives know. And through them, you'll find out. Until then, there's no reason for you to even bring it up. By the way, what happens if the Supreme Court rules against this? Has anyone asked that? There are already lawsuits against the president as a result of this action. So he allows illegal aliens to stay. He passes out IDs under his executive action. And the Supreme Court issues another 9-0 defeat against him for executive overreach, effectively nullifying whatever steps he takes. What happens then? All of the people permitted to stay are automatically illegal again? Obama sure has a way of doing things that are impossible to reverse, doesn't he? And you know, this action, this is more or less a slap in the face to any real immigrant. Any immigrant that came here the right way, under the law, they will now be part of his redistribution scheme, only the bad part of it. So immigrants, how does that make you feel? Now, there has been quite a bit of reaction to this. This is John Boehner commenting on the president's amnesty speech. All year long, I have warned the president that by taking unilateral action on matters such as his health care law, or by threatening action repeatedly, uh, on immigration, he was making it impossible to build the trust necessary to work together. As I warned the President, you can't ask the elected representatives of the people to trust you to enforce the law if you're constantly demonstrating that you can't be trusted to enforce the law. The President never listened. And with this action, he's refused to listen to the American people. The President has taken actions that he himself has said, are those of a king or an emperor, not an American president. And the action by the president yesterday will only encourage more people to come here illegally. He's damaging the presidency itself. President Obama has turned a deaf ear to the people that he was elected and we were elected to serve. In the days ahead, the People's House will rise to this challenge. We will not stand idle as the president undermines the rule of law in our country and places lives at risk. We'll listen to the American people, we'll work with our members, and we will work to protect the Constitution of the United States. Yeah, what you going to do, Boehner? What? You're going to talk to your members, you're going to move forward, you're going to do what? 
You know, I'm getting sick of hearing John Boehner. You better not do that, Mr. President. Stop it. If the president does, oh, man, oh, you're going to poison the well. Oh, you're in big trouble now because we're gonna, you're going to do what, Mr. Boehner? You're going to give another speech tomorrow? Ooh, yep, yep, yep. I'm sure Barack the First is shaking in his boots. Are you threatening the president with another lawsuit? Is that what you're doing? Like he cares. He's laughing at you. He doesn't care what you think. He knows you won't do anything. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. Congress is now irrelevant. Let's see. What else did I have here? I didn't get to any of my stuff, really. Oh, did you know Obama let more detainees out of Gitmo yesterday? Yeah, five more detainees on their way to Europe. And we didn't even get a deserter this time. He wants to close Gitmo by executive action also. So that'll be coming soon. Oh, also, the whole Ferguson thing. Now, what I heard is these domestic terrorists, and that's what they are. They're not protesters. They're not demonstrators. They're domestic terrorists now. They have put out a list of places they want hit. And it's a long list. And they have things planned in like 26 cities across America. I mean, they are planning for rioting like you have never seen if this cop is not indicted. You know, what'll be even funnier is if the cop is actually indicted. I mean, they're all going to be depressed. You know, they're so looking forward to rioting. They'll probably riot anyway. I don't know. We'll see. And that's going to do it for this week, folks. Thank you again for listening to The Ray Warner Show. I am Ray Warner, your host. If you want to email me, if you have any comments, any questions, any problems with what I've said, let me have it. You can email me at Show at gmail.com. And just so you know, there are any number of ways you can listen to the show and to the daily quick reports. You can subscribe at com, so you get the link in your email. You can uh, subscribe to The Ray Warner Show uh, on YouTube, at the YouTube channel. Every show is posted on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, you can download the show at com, so you have it on the go. You can go to iTunes and you can subscribe. But however you do, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Thank you.